is the Glass Cannon Network. Happy Friday. It's time for chaos. Now, we took a couple weeks off, and then we had an episode last week, which was episode 12. But what you, the audience, may not realize is we have not recorded in almost four weeks, like three and a half weeks. I have not seen these people. We have not played together. Uh, and for a game like this, that's... Uh, it's wildly dangerous uh, because there's so much information. Uh, if you don't think about it constantly, you're going to forget. Um, but the information I'm most interested in is what has everybody been up to for the past few weeks since I've seen you? I uh, I, I want to know what is what has your summer been like? Uh, Rob, what, what have you been up to the last three weeks? Uh, I went to uh, the Oregon coast, my family, Ooh. to uh, hang out with uh, some in-laws. And uh, we were staying right near the Goonies, the Goonies Beach. Isn't that Astoria, the... Oregon? Yeah. Well, yeah, we were just south of there, I think. But we went to Haystack Rock, which is where the One-Eyed Willie's uh, ship improbably sails on its own past. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> then I did a quick trip to New Orleans to remind my parents what I look like. And that was that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun trip. How was, uh, what's the weather like in Oregon this time of year? Is it balmy? Oh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's the luau's. Uh, you get off the plane, they put one of the, they put a lay on you. It's oh, very nice. tropical. No, it's gray and uh, <laughs> moist um, all the time, uh, yeah. from what I understand. It's weird because as you're like, you know, we grew up on the North Shore of uh, Massachusetts and there's obviously big beaches. The beaches in Oregon, it's like nobody is swimming. Which was crazy, but you're but you're hanging out in like beach towns, which are very like you know beach towns all around the world are probably very similar in a lot of ways, and yet no one's doing anything in the water because it's rightfully so it's you know frigid, so it's a strange like the impression of a beach. <laughs> I was just uh, in the Outer Banks. Uh, well, I guess we'll jump to me. I was in the Outer Banks for a week, and uh, we drove because I didn't, we didn't want to fly with two kids. So instead, we drove for t- 10 and a half hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the the beaches down there, are they're beautiful, um, and the waves are just brutal. It's not like East uh, Massachusetts beaches, which has like a low tide. There's no low tide out there. Um, but you forget how weird beach people are, too. Beach people are... <laughs> There's too much sun. Beach people are weird people. There's They're a lot just, going on. Uh, yeah. Especially like the year rounders, the people that choose to live on that beach all year. Like, you know, there's hurricanes that come through. It's just, it's weird beach <laughs> people. Um, what have you been up to, uh, Nora? Uh, since Gen Con, um, super exciting stuff. Troy, unpacking lots of boxes. Fun. Go, going furniture shopping. Ooh! You know all the all the adult things that uh, I am remind I, I I forgot about in the in the week that we got to hang out and and game a lot and, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. be around lots of merch and toys and, and RPGs <laughs> and now I'm I'm back trying to unpack and and make this place uh, look nice. Yeah, that was a big move. You moved like right before Gen Con and then went to Gen Con and then came back and had to finish like the unpacking and all that stuff. Yeah, I had I moved and then I had a, a day to unpack and then a day to pack for Gen Con and then I flew out and then came back to like building furniture and <laughs> oh, gross <laughs> unpacking boxes. Did, Did you, you have like the fun your- thing where you like have a couch already, but then you move to a place and realize that couch will not fit? <laughs> or do what it needs to do and then have to get a, a new couch? No, I was fortunate enough to like, though, the last place I lived in was this, uh, was a huge house that was already fully furnished by the time. I literally just had to go in with my bedroom stuff. Oh, and so I had the opposite of like, oh, I've got nothing to fill this space. <laughs> so, <laughs> except for my bedroom. Yeah. So you're like one of those read my space posts where it's just like a futon and a, and a, television leaning against the wall yeah, yeah super, super high ceilings one little tiny table yeah. 
Do you like the new place? I love it. It's gorgeous. Uh, but there's now some streaming troubleshooting I've got to do, uh, put up with and figure out, but, uh, figuring it out. It looks nice. I, uh, built a fireplace. I have, I got an obnoxiously huge TV. So I'm, uh, I, I can't wait to get the couch. I saw so just, I could fully veg. Yeah. 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 Sitting on pillows on the floor. Not as fun. Not as fun. Uh, as a couch. Mm. Kate, I think you moved too, didn't you? Am I making this up? I didn't move. Um, I'm in the process, the lovely, amazing, fun process of buying a house right now. What? And I'm Good also times. fun employed, so it's like a great, you know. Oh, that's fun the best employed. time to do it. <laughs> great time to <laughs> buy a house. Yeah. <laughs> I figured why not? Stress myself out as much as possible. Wow, congrats. Thanks. Did you find yeah. one? Did you put an offer in that got accepted and all yeah. that? Yeah, we got kind of lucky with like the location that, we're moving to, um, we found someone who's selling who's not absolutely money hungry mm-hmm. and insane, for lack of a better term to yeah. think of. Um, so it's been like really great working with the seller and getting contracts signed and spending like $1,000 a day on random things. Um, yeah. <laughs> didn't, we, didn't we have like an episode that was like two or three episodes ago, which now obviously is like a year and a half ago in, in real time? <laughs> Where you were like, weren't we talking about whether or not you were ever going to leave Brooklyn? Yeah. And you were like, I don't know. And then it cut to. One of those things wow. where I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to buy this house. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Put an offer in and see what happens. And it's happening. So As one does. That's yeah. exciting. You know, the thing that they don't tell you. Well, actually, they do tell you if you ask around. It's like once you've signed that paper and you've done it all, you'll realize I don't have any money left. And, oh, yeah. and that's okay. Yeah. Everyone has that feeling. So the, just if no one's told you that, just don't be nervous when you have no I'm money left. It's nine gone. steps ahead prepared. Yeah. You you know my brain. Yeah. I'm also anticipating the problem that Nora currently has of I'm not going to have furniture for this home yeah. <laughs> for like a year. <laughs> But uh, that's okay. It's good to have a place of your own. A place where you can lay your head and call yeah. it your own. You gotta have land. 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 <laughs> In the woods. You acres. Side dirt. <laughs> uh, Way from prying eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ross, what has your summer been since we've seen you last? Because summer, sorry to tell you, it's coming to an end. I hate summer, so I'm glad. Uh, but what about mm. you, Ross? Did you, was this so- the summer of Ross? Summer loving had me a blast. Everybody was talking about it. It was big, big Ross summer, big, uh, big times for me. Um, I, I got to say, I, you mentioned the Outer Banks. Mm-hmm. Were these the Outer Banks of the Carolinas? They were indeed. Okay. Well, it's interesting that you went on that little diatribe about the weirdness and oddity of beach people, <laughs> considering that's where I am from, sir. Wait, you're <laughs> from the Outer Banks? Yes. You're a beach Amazing. person? I'm a beach person. You probably picked no. up my totally chilled out beachy vibes wow. this whole time. <laughs> but I'm kind of a chilled out, laid back surfer, dude. Be- beachy um, stash. <laughs> yeah. Beachy yeah. stash. Just a chilled out beachy stash. Yeah. Um, my folks live in a little town called Manio, which is on Roanoke Island off the coast of North Carolina. Um, and... That's that's where I like went to high school and stuff. Get out so, of yeah, here. A, uh-huh. So the the experience it is a weird experience living in a beach town in the off season because you're in a you're in a town where 85% of the buildings are vacant mm-hmm. and you're just kind of like walking around in the chilly um moist air waiting for summer to start in uh in in beachy solitude. It's very strange. Yeah, I, you know, we went to an ice cream stand and I had the kids and, and my brother-in-law and my wife and uh, this is just this shirtless kid comes up. He goes, you're about to eat the best ice cream in all of the Outer Banks. And it was just like Hershey ice cream. It was nothing special. I was like, <laughs> all right. And he's like, what, what what flavor you got there? And I was like, I literally want to kill you if you ask me one <laughs> more question. You weird oh, beachy. Get away from me, kid. You weird oh, beachy. Yeah. Oh, Yankee La Valley, impervious to <laughs> ice, uh, southern charm. Hey, mister, what what sort of flavor you got there? Oh, it's best best ice cream in three counties. Want to see something I stole from the marina later? I told you, you're an accomplice now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's this, that's my yeah. experience at the other bank. He could have the been 13 or 28. I have no idea. Yeah. The first kid I met when, when my family moved to the Outer Banks knocked on my door, opened it up, and was like, uh, you want to come out and play? And, and the first thing he told me was like, you want to see some flares I stole from the marina? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Like, yes, I do. Old one eyed Timmy, they called him. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, 
the summer is coming to an end, which is great because I hate it. And uh, fall is right around the corner. And let's be honest, the end of season one of Time for Chaos is coming faster than you probably think. Um, or not. Sometimes we start going off topic and you guys rob a DMV. So maybe not. I don't not. know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But a uh, DMV had it coming. They Gotta did. find more DMVs. <laughs> Done. It was literally in existence for like a year and a half. Uh, <laughs> let's let's do a luck roll here. Uh, what is everyone's current luck? I'm curious. Oh right. boy, let's oh, find out. Right, forty two right now. I need a graphic comes in. It's like luck roll. Yeah. Luck roll. Seventy one. Seventy one luck. That's a lot of luck. Thirty six. Thirty six. Okay. You're the yeah. When I need a group luck roll, I just ask Kate. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Ross, yes. what about you? Where you at? 60 luck. 60 luck. Okay, right down Broad Street. Rob? Yeah. Uh, 42. 42. Okay. All right, so Rob and Kate, you guys have a great chance of improving your luck here if you fail this luck roll. How did everybody do? Okay. Oops. I finally, <gasps> finally failed. I failed this one. I rolled a 77. <laughs> That's, I got uh, lots of luck, baby. Right Ooh, where we started. <gasps> and got Jeez. 10 more points. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see these dice. They're, they're yeah, loaded it's dice. right here. She's That's back, baby. Zero. That is insane. Okay. All right. So you got an 81 now, Luck? Yeah. Yes. That's She's great. untouchable. Bulletproof. What could go wrong? See, you know what's nice is like if you ever need to like, you know what? Add 50 to that roll. You can actually afford it. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, Rob? Did you pass? Fail? I passed uh, slash failed. So I got six uh, extra points. I'm at 48. Okay. Uh, uh, Ross? That's a big fail for your boy Ross B. Um, it's not. No no more luck for me. Stay no staying at steady at 60. Okay. Uh, and Kate? I remain at the bottom of the luck pool. I rolled a 14 under 36. Oh, oh my God. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. All right. And I wanted to do a sanity check. We haven't really checked in on sanity lately. I'm curious what everybody's san is at. Yes. I'm at I don't a like that you're asking these questions. Yeah, I don't like it either. Yeah, I feel yeah. like you're just taking inventory. He's like, who yeah. do I need to destroy this just, episode? Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like to do a little check in on everybody's mental state because I'm yeah. a friend. It's as if these will <laughs> become important soon. Right? Um, yeah. Makes me nervous. Uh, Fawn's sanity is uh, pretty uh, shaky at the best of times, and um, today's no different. The sanity is at 36. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the same as uh, Kate's luck. Uh, yeah. What is uh, Feyruz's sanity at? I'm at a C plus. So I got a 78. 78. Okay, that'll pass. Uh, Carter? Uh, 55. Okay. So not in the best of worlds right now. And Margot Sauer? I may be the unluckiest, but I am the sanest. I have 90 out of 99. Oh my God. Damn, okay. Wow. All right, I got to get <laughs> working on you. <laughs> no, you don't. See, I should have lied. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how this, uh, how this season shakes out. Who will survive, who will die, and who will go insane. Um, it is now Tuesday, January 20th. You've been quite busy since basically witnessing uh, the, the murder of your, your friend Jackson Elias uh, on Thursday, January 15th. And uh, when last we left our intrepid investigators, Carter and Vaughn had just caught wind uh, from a man named Art Mills, who is a friend of Hilton Adams, uh, who is the one that is sitting on death row uh, for one of these murders. Um, he was in the uh, Harlem Hellfighters uh, during the war, as was uh, uh, Hilton. So you, you meet up with Art Mills uh, and you find out from him that among several concerns that their sort of investigating group had um, before Hilton was incarcerated, something about Juju House seemed to be of interest. A possible lead was there that couldn't be properly investigated because Adams was arrested shortly thereafter. Of course, Carter and Vaughn learn this just as Margot and Feyruz were at Juju House uh, talking with the shopkeep, and you had just pulled out the mask you found in Peru to show this man. Yeah, I rolled a luck <laughs> roll to see if I could do that, and it feels like it's not a lucky thing to have done. Well, now, you, you have it on yet. your person. Yeah, you were worried. <laughs> Did I leave that in Peru? 
Um, but no, you brought it with you and you, you carry it with you everywhere you go, evidently. Uh, <laughs> in your satchel. So, to kick things off today, uh, this is probably going to get a little dark, so uh, content warning. But imagine for a moment pitch black darkness. And you hear a, a faint sound at first. It, it starts to grow and grow until you realize it's not like a, a, a round shaped sound so much as a hum, a, a thrumming that you can almost feel more than you can hear. It's an odd sensation, it, this throbbing continues and it starts to grow and and as you hear it it pulls you in two different directions like in one way you almost get that sick feeling like your bowels are loosening from a steady vibration that enters your body but then there's also something oddly satisfying about this feeling maybe it's sexual maybe it isn't but it's very powerful nonetheless margo you open your eyes, and standing before you is an enormous stepped pyramid. Standing tall, enormous, against this dark purple, blue, and black sky. Covering the pyramid, as far as you can see, are bodies. Bodies of men and women, shadows of uh, shapes that seem to be even larger than human. And they're all naked, as far as you can see, in various states of intercourse. And it's every possible combination. It's man and woman, man and man, women and women, threesomes, foursomes. Everyone is just going at each other in every way possible. And as you stand there, you still feel that thrumming sound, and you hear these other sounds now, sounds of pleasure, sounds of passion, but then you also start to hear like animal sounds roaring and, and moaning, and you realize there's some bestiality going on as well. And amongst this throng of bodies, I imagine you see like Again, I, this is going to be graphic, but I think it'll help paint a picture. It's like a guy and a bison going at it. <laughs> and at the moment of climax, someone comes in with a machete and just like hacks at the bison and blood just explodes out, sprays all over the man that it was copulating with, all the people below. And then you turn away from that and you see two women going at it with a man and the man's wearing uh, a mask that looks like a, the face of a bat, we'll say. And it's almost as if they both ritualistically pull out these knives with long blades and they just stick it into the chest of the man they're fornicating with and drag the knives down and just his intestines spill out, blood again pouring out on everyone below and, and people just scooping up the blood and rubbing it on their body while they continue to have intercourse. And then one by one, you see throngs of people. If they're not having sex, they're just killing people. And everyone is just basking and bathing in all of this. And as this is happening, that thrumming is continuing and something begins to come into focus at the top of the pyramid. You can't quite see it at first. Is it a shape? Is it like a triangle? Or is it like some sort of body? You're not sure, but you're pulled away from that because you realize there's some, someone standing next to you. So you turn with a start and you see Jackson Elias standing there and he's just smiling calmly at you but you look down and you see that his chest is ripped open and his entrails are spilling out onto the ground below and you look up and just under the brim of his hat you see that symbol carved onto his forehead and blood is just like leaking down his nose into his mouth and he just reaches out a hand to like grasp yours and he says to you in a voice that is like his but also not his he's like and become with me a god
and we pull back from there and everything gets really dark and then you just see almost like eye holes looking at this scene and then the eye holes come into view and you see it's this mask that you found in de Mendoza's hotel room back in Peru and Marga you're holding it out to this shopkeep and his eyes are bulging out of his head and he's like this is quite beautiful it does not look like it came from my people yet it is similar in design to many of my treasures where may i ask did you find this oh um wow i've just been having so much fun traveling lately um i just how did i find this um just on one of my travels um find a lot of things uh, this is my favorite can't remember does it look familiar to you no not really but it does look quite precious I'm sorry we t- I'm so rude what is your name we didn't get your name uh Silas he Silas Nikwane Pleasure. But this mask, you do not know where you found it. Where do you travel where something such as this would come into your possession? I was just all over the world. Um, you know, I'm from Europe, so there. Um, here, um, below here, South, South America, um, <clears throat> maybe Africa. Maybe, maybe estate sales, maybe... Yes. Rummaging through attics. I go where the wind takes me. How much? How much would you like for this piece? Oh, I, I'm not ready to part with this um, at the moment. But perhaps, uh, perhaps a try before you buy. What? I do not understand. She's like. Staring at Favor is like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe he wants to try it on. Everyone has a price, yes. I would be honored to add something like this to my collection. Are you sure there is no price that I could pay for such a beautiful uh, mask or mirror, whatever this is? I'm, I'm really quite attached to it uh, at the moment. I would love to get your cards we can keep lines of communications open Ah. Uh, perhaps i have something else um i'm you may you may not but you tease an old man showing me such a treasure as this and pulling it away please you are welcome to come here anytime if you change your mind you say you are from europe what brings you to New York, what brings you to Harlem? Oh, I'm just here with friends, exploring. I've, I've never been to New York, so just going around to all the different uh, boroughs and uh, little enclaves and just exploring. That's just what I like to do. He looks at you, Ferus, and you. What brings you to New York, or do you live here? Well, I don't live here, but uh, I do like to visit friends on occasion. Very well. Well, if there is anything else I can help you with, let me know. And I just kind of like pull uh, Margot just, uh, you know, away for a second. Uh, Isn't there something maybe he Is there anything that we can show him that maybe he could recognize? Any symbols? Do we have anything? Um, what about your your notebook? You always are taking note of all drawings and uh, reliefs. Oh, yes, yes, Um, yes. And I just turn back around. (laughs) Would you... Now, this is not something I have in my position, but is this, as she opens up her notebook, uh, 
Is this pattern at all familiar to you? And what's the uh, image of? It's the one of the gold panels that we had put back into the temple. Hmm. He says, uh, no, I have not seen such a thing. Was this also something you found at uh, an estate sale or on the side of the road in your travels? Well, it was something that I had seen that sparked my interest and I had no idea what the symbolism meant. You see, that is my specialty. Ah, yes. No, this is not African in nature. I am not familiar with it. Well, perhaps if we take your card and there's something that should come up in the future. But of course. Now I don't believe that my friend Sala here is interested in selling such an item. Well, as I said, if you change your mind, you are welcome to come back. I would pay a handsome sum for something as beautiful as that from women as beautiful as you. Here is my card. And he hands you uh, a card that says Silas Nakwane, uh, owner proprietor of Juju House. Come by any time. Certainly. Thank you. She like hastily wraps up the mask again and stuffs it in her bag. And you right then. leave. Yes. <laughs> you go Thank back you. into the alley. But there was that uh, like boarded up pawn shop uh, next door. A uh, couple of drunks lingering around towards the end. You start to walk out and you turn to look back at Juju House uh, and you see the, the sh- one of the sheets that was covering the window and it's just Silas Nakwane watching you. And then he lets go of the sheet. Margot is very paranoid and on high alert right now. <laughs> Do you think he really didn't recognize any of those objects. I think he's lying. I did not make a psychology roll, but I do remember him saying that some of this matched uh, stuff that he has in his shop, but then at the same time saying he doesn't know what it is, but really, really, really wants it. Um, something's not right. Something's not right. And I just feel like I'm not sure what information is safe to tell him, but I feel like in order to get answers from him, V would need to give a little, and I just didn't know what is safe to say. <sighs> Perhaps we reconvene with the fellows and yes, see maybe, if they found out anything. Maybe they have some more information. We cut from there to uh, Vaughn and Carter zipping uh, uptown because I think you guys are around. 137th and Lennox, and then Carter and Vaughn, you were, I think, further east, I can't remember. So it's not too far, but you've got to like hustle across. Um, and I would say, give me, who has uh, worse luck? Uh, Ross or uh, Rob, Carter or Vaughn? I was at 48. I think, yeah, it's Carter's got the worst luck. Okay, Carter, give me a luck roll. Let's see if you just happen to run into Margot and... Uh, I got a 66. So, 66. Yeah. Yeah, so like two ships passing in the night, maybe you get up in the direction of uh, Juju House, and uh, I can't remember what time of day it is by now, but if you get there and you see the same court uh, that they did, uh, there's just a sign that says, uh, out for lunch. Back in, <laughs> back in the night. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Vaughn, you can move, man. How do you move with all those cigarettes in your body? <laughs> with, uh, with uh, great difficulty, old boy. I, uh, <clears throat> but did I? I should have never eaten that club sandwich. Uh, and I don't know what you're talking about. The revivifying effects of tobacco oh, only serve to energize you're my, my vigor, my spirits. Uh, oh, if anything, it's for want of them that uh, I'm so uh, actually, do you have, Can I have one right moment. now? <laughs> oh, that's the spirit. Ah. Um, uh, and so I, I think um, seeing the sign, maybe just kind of peeping, but there's no way of like seeing inside through the window with the sheets. 
yeah, you just see some curios uh, in the window, uh, all obviously African in nature, um, and the hours, but there's a little handwritten sign that says, out for lunch, be back uh, in an hour. What does that mean? That could mean he's got he's got the girls and he's, it was, out for lunch could mean out for uh, killing. Quite Just right, a little bit right. of sacrifice. Here we go. I'm quite right, telling us. If, 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 uh, if our friends came here, there's, 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 who's to say that they're not in there right now? Um, uh, undergoing what, what, what sort of travails? I don't know. We don't, I don't even want to think about it, man. Uh, I knock on the door. Yeah. Good, 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 good call. Knock on the door. Boom, 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 boom. No one answers. You also don't know when that sign was turned. That hour could have been 59 minutes ago, or it could uh-huh. have been five minutes ago. Does Carter see a strangely eaten hot dog? <laughs> hot dog the door. <laughs> like, uh, like, yes. God, someone ate a hot dog from the middle. What kind of heathen? <laughs> Look, listen, uh, hot dogs aren't necessarily in my line, but I, I at least know you don't attack them like a cob of corn. Exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, are those uh, are are those uh, um, folks that were just kind of lingering in the court still here? Uh, no, you don't see anyone uh, hanging out there now. There's just a couple drunks that were uh, bouncing around, but no, there's some foot traffic uh, on the the main street there, past where the uh, pawn shop was. I um, approach the uh, the um, the drunkards and uh, um, perhaps they're taking winos. Winos. Uh, the we, winos. Don't, we don't need to be derogative. These these a little decorum. These, these uh, gourmets, and um, yeah, if you look around, you could still find one of them just hanging yeah. out, leaning on a trash can. Excuse me, old boy. Um, I don't know how long you've been uh, um, relaxing here, but um, I was wondering if you uh, saw um, two ladies enter that uh, particular establishment. Guys, like, yeah. Perhaps one would have been about yay, hi, um, sort of a fashionable bob. I said, yeah, what do you want to know sort? about them? Well, well, you've established that they've gone in. I'm asking you if you saw them come out. Yeah, I saw two ladies come in there and then they left. Oh, my God. Uh, thank you, you've been ever so charming. And I'll give, and I'll give him some, some, uh, money. A tuppence? Money. Yes, a, a tuppence. No, um, <laughs> yes. Spend that if you make it across the pond. <laughs> Psych your mind. Got you. Um, Loser. No, I'll give him a, some, some, uh, I mean, it's the 20s, so, I mean, a quarter is not as insulting. <laughs> you as saw a penny in half and throw it to him. Yeah. Here you are, so here's a hey penny. Uh, and he just takes it. Uh, I don't know how reliable the source is, but that at least gives me some peace of mind. All right, all right. So they walked in and they walked out. Apparently, probably said nothing about this hot dog corpse. Um, I guess we just go for a stroll. I don't... Was there a plan to meet up uh, afterwards? Uh, Were you going to go back to the Waldorf Astoria? Uh, I can't remember what your plans were for the day. Earlier in the day, you met Rebecca uh, Schosenberg uh, at the Lafayette Theater, where she introduced you to Millie Adams, Hilton Adams' wife. Uh, You spent some time there, and that's when you split off, Carter and Vaughn going to speak, uh, look for Hilton's old uh, investigating buddies, and then obviously Margot and Feyruz went to Juju House. But now you're all just kind of wandering in Harlem. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about extending the season, Troy. We could just, this whole session could be us trying to find each other. <laughs> <laughs> Going yeah. out of different stores. <laughs> Margo, Polo. This yeah. will be a bottle episode, and yeah. the bottle is Lennox Ave. <laughs> I mean, I it mean, seems like we yeah. would have a, a reconvening point. I, th- we're, I feel like, like it's the mid-afternoon, kind of. Yeah, it's it's mid, yeah, mid, mid, mid to late afternoon at this point. Mm-hmm. You spend a good time, uh, a good amount of time at the theater with the... Uh, Millie and Rebecca and she said that they would get back to you through either the wall I can't remember if you said the Waldorf or to call uh, Ramsey to let you know if she's able to set up a meeting with uh, Hilton Mm -hmm. and also your lawyer friend uh, well Jackson's lawyer who's now your sort of go to person uh, is going to try to get you a meeting with Erica Carlisle uh, Roger Carlisle's uh, sister right Um, so perhaps we make our way back downtown yeah, let's find the ladies. 
I mean, our ladies, though, not our. They're not in a ball of dust. No woman can belong to a man. And what I mean is, the two women who we are, compa our compatriots, that we're friends with. We, you can be friends with women these days. What are you looking at? I was talking to the wino. <laughs> yes, of course. It's a friendship, a little, our little cohort colloquy. It's platonic. Co uh, it's kind of like a, uh, yeah. Yes. All right, so you head downtown. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. Um, and Margot and Feyruz, what were your intentions after you got out of Juju House? Well, I... I don't know if that was helpful at all. I... We didn't have any other errands for the day, so I suppose we should meet fellas back at... The Waldorf? Yes, uh, that feels like a good idea. I just feel very exposed here now after seeing him like lingering in the window I just feel, feel safer in a bigger group I feel like we're missing something mm -hmm. maybe we just have to see what maybe they found something out I don't know yes I, I always I sneak agree. back in there later but <laughs> <laughs> well, let's you find know. the boys first I do yes. want to have some fun but yes let's let's <laughs> yes and so you head back to the Waldorf Astoria. Um, by now it's uh, later in the afternoon, closing in on early evening. And uh, you see uh, Carter and Vaughn are there as well. Maybe you guys are hanging out in the lobby. Uh, and when you arrived, Vaughn, there was, uh, there was some messages for you uh, from Ramsey. So if you call back Ramsey, you get good news. Uh, it appears Millie Adams was able to secure you a one-on-one uh, -on -one with Hilton uh, tomorrow, uh, which would be Wednesday the 21st. Excellent. Uh, it sounds like it's a very small window for guests, uh, so you've got to get there and you'll have about 30 minutes uh, to chat with him and then that's it. Um, There'll be more rules, uh, it seems, once you get there. But that's uh, that's the plan. You're meeting uh, at uh, in Ossining at Sing Sing Prison is at uh, 11.30 in the morning. Right. Uh, and then Ramsey was also able to secure you a meeting with uh, Erica Carlisle's lawyer, uh, a guy by the name of Bradley Gray. Um, he didn't know what your availability was, whereas Millie got you that that time. Um, but if you call him back and let him know when you want to set up that meeting, he can set it up. So that could be tomorrow, that could be Thursday. Um, but his office, I think it's on the Upper East Side. Um, his office is Dunstan, Whittleby, and Gray. Oh, it's West 57th Street. So it's a uh, Hell's Kitchen area. Okay. Dunstan, Whittleby, and Gray. Very well. Um... If we're all together, uh, it seems as though our, our, our seeds are coming to fruition. My God, girls, so glad to see you. We, I just want the record to show that we almost saved your lives. Yes. What? <laughs> we I... ran like a two bats out of hell. You smell like strippers and cigarettes. The strippers, uh, <clears throat> I want more of a detailed explanation of what that is, but uh, definitely cigarettes because it's uh, now that we live in this era. Uh, yeah, so but yeah, we, 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 so look, we went to this place that I want to again point out, there were no strippers. You also very, very box, like the aroma of, of sandwiches, which they had in abundance. Um, they did. But, uh, and uh, we were talking to some, some, some guy, Vaughn and this dude really trauma bonded. It was real sweet. And uh, anyway, he said that Juju House was like the center of what they, you know, they, they knew something was up with Juju House, Hilton Adams and his whole crew. And so we tore ass across Harlem faster than I've ever run in my life. Vaughn was in the back. He barely could keep up. Anyway, we something. got there. Oh. And, some, uh, and you weren't there. And so we nearly busted the door down. But then a wino, a very helpful a drunk, told us that you're fine. So anyway, just again, credit where credit's due. We did nearly save your life. Something's very odd about that place, and I can't really quite put my finger on it. Um, I don't know how it happened, but I showed him my mask, 
our mask. Um, he was showing me his mask, and he was. Oh. It's not a euphemism. <laughs> it's actual mask. What's show. going on? What? <laughs> um, so I showed him mine, um, and he he said that he had never seen anything like it before, but at the same time, really wanted to buy it. For somebody who has never seen anything like it before and couldn't really tell us what it was, he seemed like he was about to throw a lot of money at us. The tone in the room changed, and when we left, after nothing came of that, he didn't seem to want to give us any information. Us two, we left, and he was watching us as we went, and now that you say they are like a center, Yes. Uh, uh, Art Mills, the colleague of, of the lamented Mr. Mr. Hilton, uh, Adams, said that his party believed that um, the epicenter of the murders for which uh, Mr. Adams is currently taking the blame may have been the Juju house itself. And so now you're telling me that its proprietor was um, caught being uh, having an inordinate amount of interest for a cultic mask that we found in Peru. This may be a language thing, but when you say epicenter of murders, do you mean to say that, like, maybe um, that's where they all happened or were planned or that they have something to do with planned making for, like, the murders? When, when, <laughs> I spoke, when I spoke <laughs> of the red cloth, with the, yes, yes. Um, uh, Mr. Mills said that he had encountered those blackguards as well. And some asshole ate a hot dog from the middle out. What? Oh, that wasn't an asshole. That was Margot. Uh-uh. Oh, my I God. I ate my hot dog. Is it um, traditional? It I thought delicious. you came from the realm of sausages. <laughs> yeah, don't sausages, you eat sausages every day? Sausages, not hot dogs. I don't know what you put in those, but it's not meat. It's best not to think about it. Yes. There are certain eldritch mysteries into which the mind should not probe. <laughs> and no one is. <laughs> what hot dogs are made of? Horrifying. Quite correct. <laughs> don't look too deeply into the hot dog. Yes. Anyway, back to the cult. We, um, I think that the Juju House may be, uh, uh, may be where they have their uh, dark and curious meetings, where they plot their various deeds. This, this is my theory, anyway. Call me paranoid if you wish. Is anyone I mean, feeling brave and curious? Do we just go back during the day? Do we do oh, no. a DMV break-in and yes. piss on his desk? Like, yeah. uh-huh. oh, I don't know about the pissing part, but... We'll see how much I've drank. We'll see. Mm. Yes, we can discuss tactics, but um, a break in uh, for sure. Micturation still under debate. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. I mean, are are you got... saying that we should do that um, as soon as tonight? I well, got I'm not plans. going to sleep tonight. I go to sleep. But first of all, I think someone's going to kill me for this mask. Second of all, every time I sleep, I have like these really like nice dreams at first, and then they become very not nice, and I'm just like not down. To, I've been having bad dreams, but it's fine. What I don't sort know. of dreams? What what yeah. sort of things are you seeing? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm uh, sure we've heard it all. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you. I'm sure you. You are all having the same dreams. But f- mm, no, I've been sleeping fine. What have you been dreaming about? So that's not necessarily how dreams work. But um, <laughs> well, just because we all did the same things, um, the pyramids and um, lots, lots of. What else? Fornicating. Forna what? Excuse me? Just like lots <laughs> of that. Yes, well, no? surely only humans are involved. I just, yeah, no. I mean, we've all had an occasional sex dream. I mean, let's not... It's perfectly you know. natural. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I don't think you should... Yeah, no shame for that. But the, the pyramids? Dreams? No? That... I mean, you know, no. every once in a while. Have we? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Not like this. I'm sure you've been haunted by what you saw in Peru. Uh, haunted by... Uh, Jackson Elias's murder and that fight with the guys jumping out of the window with the crazy headbands, but uh, only Margot has been uh, having these recurring nightmares that are starting to mesh with everything else that's happening. Yeah, tell us all about it, Margot. Here, wait, let me take a In big sip great of water. Detail. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm feeling kind of uh, uh, don't know. Maybe later. I totally understand. I understand. Don't want you to think anything of me. These aren't, it's not coming from me. It's just these dreams. I feel like they're not, they're they're because of the mask. I don't. Because of the mask. When you have these dreams, are they they when you're sleeping? Or are they just? I think so. 
a baby, mostly. Because as far as waking nightmares go, we've all seen some strange things. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, well. We just know that, that dreams can be uh, messages from the subconscious, or so my uh, uh, counselors have led me to believe, but there is a, there, there is um, mysteries to be unraveled about your about yourself and your soul. Uh, attend to them. Uh, maybe maybe begin journaling. Oh, I am. My journal is very, very cursed because of the details I have in it now about my dreams. Um, I don't think that's what they are. I, th- I thought we were all having these at the same time, and now I just feel really weird. Maybe one day I'll tell, tell you about them, but I just kind of maybe want to break into the juju shop now. <laughs> it's just like um, getting sweaty. All right. I know that I will not sleep very well this evening, for I'm absolutely uh, I'm thrumming with excitement. Uh, the prospect of uh, bearding the fellow who kept me out of Sing Sing last time when I waltz into my mandated interview. Oh, I can't I wait to meet that. The revenge is going to be sweet. I'd love to stop for donuts on the way and yes. just be eating them. Like, nah. Mm. Look at me with my donuts. Very strange American eat, pray, love tour. <laughs> So you've got that thing. Hot dogs and donuts. <laughs> you've got the, the meeting with Hilton Adams at 11.30 a.m. sharp. Uh, you're on the train that's going to take you about an hour to get out there. You want to give yourself enough time. So it's early to rise on the train. I don't know. you got to decide if everybody's going to go or just some of you or one of you, however you want to do it. Uh, and then if you want to contact Ramsey, he may be able to set up a meeting with uh, Bradley Gray, Erica Carlisle's lawyer tomorrow as well. The longer you wait, you may not get that appointment um, until Thursday or Friday, but you might want to put it off until then as well. You've got a lot of lot of things in the oven. You've also discovered a million other things. Uh, you've right. got some other leads as well. So, Let's get Bradley Gray on the books. Let's say Thursday. I love that this is part of this game. Opening the <laughs> date planner. Making a schedule. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Thursday. Okay, let's do two days from now. Yeah, let's get that set. Let's, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll go to see Hilton. I mean, we can decide who who's going to see Hilton. Uh, but I, tonight we case out, we case the Juju house. Keep an eye yes. out. Yes, shall we case it? And then I'll, I'll, I'll catch the train up to uh, Sing Sing in the morning. And anyone who wishes to join me. Who needs mm-hmm. sleep, honestly? You sleep on the train. Yeah, I must admit that since um, since our adventures in years past, sleep is uh, never entirely deep. It's all right. It seems to be the way things are right these days. Yes. So, is your plan to all go case the joint tonight under the yeah. cover of night? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Tell me what you're thinking of doing. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about this court real quick. Are we quick. talking break in? Are we talking watch? I would love to break in and see if there's uh, any specific occult items that maybe had not been on full display. Anything we recognize. He had a key on him, so perhaps we can find that and see Door. in that back room oh. if there's anything. Maybe we can pretend to be drunkards on the streets to case the joint before we decide to break in? Yeah, I got a couple fake noses we can buy. <laughs> if, if those of us who are most skilled at skulking make their ingress into the Juju house, and those of us uh, who are perhaps more skilled at looking can uh, act as lookouts in that little courtyard. Um, and then remember to, to find anything that might be exculpatory or exonerating for poor Mr. Adams. Yeah, murder weapons. On a, on a scale of like one to a hundred, like how good are you at sneaking? Oh, well, like on a hundred scale? Like yeah. if I was to, <laughs> if I was, like if I was to express like it in terms of a number? I'd say um, I'm like a 37. Let's see here. Um, I, I, I confess that since my wound, uh, I, uh, my... This is going to sound way too specific, but a 24. I put it at a 24. <laughs> like if I had to express it numerically, that's how. Um, I would say the glass is half full for me. A little above half is 56. Are we talking like specifically um, like our, like a stealth, like how we can stealth <laughs> that's around? What I thought. Yeah. Like what word are we using? Okay. Stealth sounds good. Yeah, I, gotta, I would say I'm a 60-ish. 
Ah, this makes sense. The, the DMV mm-hmm. last time. So we did have experience in that, yes. I mean, yeah, it's, it depends. Do we want the people who are best at sneaking to sneak in? Or if we're looking for things in there? Um, well, Feyruz has a good Well, looking. I think my curiosity has the best of me. I have to be inside. I have to see what is in there. And you yeah. know what? To be honest, this Feyruz has shown me she's got a lot to learn about breaking into places. So this could be a great follow-up tutorial for her. <laughs> and I'm happy to take it upon myself to show thank her you. the ropes. Of some yes, so she's got potential. Well, thank you, uh, um, uh, Tilling Ass. I'm sure we could all uh, enrich ourselves greatly with your mentorship in various capacities. Um, Fraulein Sauer and I will make good uh, your protection by keeping an eye on the street. We'll have a bottle that we're sharing, pretending to be drunkards outside, um, I guess. Or, that's or, be fun. I love okay. it. That's one. There's no bad ideas. I'm sure we'll, we'll, we can be drunkards. We could find some secluded place to secrete ourselves. Yeah. Just and cartoonish anyone, red cheeks. <laughs> You're just should like anyone, rouge. Yeah. Should anyone give you any trouble, anyone out on the street, anybody being... You know, any, any anyone of the uh, non sober variety, right for the kidneys. Just there's no no reason to just knock them out before they know it. I'm going to be packing tonight. Um, am I the only one with this uh, inclination again? Oh, a weapon. <laughs> yes. I thought you meant oh, you were. Oh, okay. I Is that see. Is that the slang now? No. No, no, no. I I didn't know that in your uh, command of the. English tongue, you you had managed to um, acquire the particular turns of phrase of the gangsters of Chicago. It's just my study of study of New York and the cities and how what they talk yes. like. Yeah, I'm bring, I'm bringing my gun um, and my knife. Yes, oh, well, I never leave home without it. Hmm, yes, Fraulein Capone and I will be uh, packing, as they say, <laughs> out in the courtyard to make sure that your back is well and truly covered. All right. Um. All right. So. You're going to head up to Juju House, all four of you. And uh, you say that like it's a bad. He was idea. doing a no, lot of I'm reading just, while we were planning. <laughs> um, I know. I'm just trying to figure this out. All four of you going, and you're going to see what it's what the situation is, and possibly uh, break in. Yeah, I think we watch it for a little while, yeah. see if there's any activity. You know, we're not going to just go flying in through the front door right away. No, yeah. but with the hopes of pillaging something. What time? Uh, do you plan on going there? I mean, Harlem's happening these days, right? So I think we gotta go, we gotta go late. Did we? We gotta go late in prime midnight. drunk time. Oh, how about on the card he gave us, um, when's the closing time for the shop? We should definitely go like a couple hours after that, I would say. Uh, it closes at 5 p.m. Oh, that's really early. I um, say we go midnight. It's clean, it's dramatic. Yeah, let's go midnight. Yes. Yeah. And, um, Hmm. Midnight. Okay. Grab a drink at a speakeasy, baby, just to calm your nerves. Hmm. And we'll do a crawl. Stave off the shakes. And you make your way uptown to Lenox Avenue and 137th Street. Right around midnight. Four of you are rather uh, conspicuous. What's the opposite of conspicuous? <laughs> I can't think of the, t- the word. I think conspicuous my head. is what we are. Inconspicuous would be. If Thank you. You're we inconspicuous yes. is what we're uh, hoping to be. But you stick out a little bit. It but is it's, us. It's dark and it's late. Um, you go by uh, jazz clubs where you hear loud music, people dancing, uh, smoke spilling out of windows. As you start to approach Ransom Court, everybody roll a spot hidden. Okay. Ooh. Here we go. <laughs> it's just never gonna happen. Hell yeah. 30 under 62. That's a hard. Mm. Hard success? Hard. I rolled a 22 under 80. Another hard. I failed. I failed. <laughs> and two fails. 
We've right, been there so before, so we know what's up. You've to been there for. before, yeah. you know what's up. As you start to approach, maybe uh, both Margot and Feyruz, like put their hands on Carter and Vaughn as to say, hold on a second, because mm-hmm. you see uh, a number of people entering uh, the alleyway. Yeah, and if you stand I've, there for a second, a couple more come. Oh, what are Another they? Uh, what are they wearing? It, uh, looks like they're wearing suits. Uh, looks like the first group was uh, three uh, African American men, and then the second group was one black guy, one white guy. Does it look like they're just out and about having a night on the town, or? Possibly, um, but you know there's nothing down there except for Juju House and that boarded up uh, pawn shop. Now, this is a, there are tenement buildings above, right? Um, uh, if I haven't mentioned that before, like above the pawn shop, just like any New York building, like the bottom floor is your business and then there's apartment buildings up there. But when you were there, you don't remember seeing any entrances to apartment buildings. Those entrances were all on the street. Mm-hmm. Perhaps we keep an eye out. On what Rather they're doing. Happening place. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Maybe no. we can pretend we drunkenly are just walking by and seeing if we see where they're going. No, I realize yes. that um I realize that uh sneaking and skulking may not be my forte, but um I have not been seen by the proprietor this day. Mm. Uh, perhaps if I was to stumble in, I could get a sense of who was there? Yeah, act like you're a tourist. Yes, it shouldn't be too hard. It's barely a lie. Yeah, and then just you're looking for directions. You you were following a group of uh, people who looked like they were going into a secret uh, club, maybe, and you, you know. Yeah, you're just that's looking for a, for a place to wet your whistle. That's Looking the for ticket. a good yes. time. Uh, that's it, sport. All right. Two more um, people walk down the alleyway. Very go, popular indeed. Go. Oh, oh, we push him. Now? And then um, <laughs> and, uh, I kind of like stumble across the street, get my bearings and kind of walk over to just kind of get the vibe. So Vaughn splits off from Carter, Feyruz, and Margot and starts approaching the entryway to the alley. You get there and you turn and you look down and you just see that door Uh, leading into Juju House and a figure standing outside. All in shadow. Just moonlight, really, uh, lighting this court, ransom court. Uh Um, Just standing there with a bowler hat on. Okay. And Vaughn is, like, again, putting, trying to, like, easing into his best, like, drunken and bewildered Englishman on the town sort of vibe, just walks straight up to this uh, figure. It's like, all right, sport, I know where the action is. Um, I didn't have, I hear the password <clears throat> is Lindbergh. Hmm? <laughs> Stand aside and let me in. There's a good chap. I'm sorry, can I help you? Oh, well, I was hoping that you could help me. I hear that this is one of the most happening spots in town. Yeah, just looking to wet my whistle, if you understand. A little bit of the raising of the wrist, if that sort of thing is allowed here. Hmm? What did you say? I think we understand each other. Just stand aside and let me in. Oh, there you go, sport. <laughs> There's a good fellow. So, Puts his hand on your chest. Big, hmm? meaty palm. So. Can I get a good look at this at this guy now? Is it- yeah, uh, he is... Uh, He's African American, big thick neck, uh, bowler hat, wearing a you know a, nothing fancy for a suit, um, and you can feel from the pressure on your chest that he's very strong. And he's like, "Sorry, uh, we're closed." Oh, I understand. I understand very much. You're closed. Yes, <laughs> yes. No admittance. <laughs> yes, but um, uh, I think we both know how these sorts of things work. Hmm. 
Um, so here's how it's going to work. You can see that I'm a non-threatening customer, and I'll just uh, walk in. You never were the wiser, and then I'll go in and have whatever sort of bathtub you're, uh, Gene, you're whipping up in the bathtub back there, huh? What did you say? It's not that kind of place. Now step mm-hmm. aside. If you want to speak easy, there's one two blocks down. Don't make me ask again. <laughs> oh. No need to get nasty on the sport. Just trying to... Just trying to find the best in town. I was told it was right down here. I, I must have gotten turned around. <laughs> First time in town, don't you see? You were told the wrong thing. Mm. Now get out of here. Yes, uh... My, my, my apologies, I assure you. Cheers, cheerio! And, um... Just kind of, like, stagger out of the alley and then kind of let my... And then walk over to where the... <laughs> buddies are I can, see, I can picture you like keeping your face on and then immediately turning the corner and the face goes away so. mm-hmm. yep so. just like wobble 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 straight and then uh <laughs> walk up to them it's like well it's locked up tight as an old drum uh rather imposing chap at the door uh, uh hand about the size of a fry pan couldn't uh, uh kept me out is this a jazz club hmm is it a jazz club not from not from where I was standing. Didn't hear a strain at all coming from anything resembling Big Spider Beak or the like. No. Um, and did I hear anything there? <sighs> anything from inside? Any anything that would tell me the what sort of stuff was going on inside? Speech? No. Chanting? No, it was very, very quiet. Killing. <laughs> but are we watching are we watching those people that had entered the 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 alleyway? Are we watching them enter into this establishment? We'd um, seen them enter the courtyard and yeah. when I went in they were gone and it was just the guy standing in front of the door. Is that right? Yeah, I imagine you're standing on 137th Street and you're just seeing people enter the alleyway from your view. And then when Vaughn got there, there was just this one guy. And at this point you've seen now like six people go down there. And he was in fact, standing at the door to Juju House? Yeah, in mm. fact, one other person just goes in now, down there. I'm wondering yeah. if I can, like, try to remember from being in there, did it seem like there might have been another entrance? Or, like, if I go around to the backside of the street, I can assume, like, there is a window? Um, it seemed actually very small. Um, certainly uh, seven or eight people in there would be very very tight especially with all of the things that were all the bric-a-brac and knickknacks uh and artifacts that were laying around uh now there was a a, a curtain behind the uh the cash register area um that you thought may be a, a storage room or uh you know maybe where the proprietor lives um but you have no idea what the size of that is. A lot of people wouldn't fit in the main part of the shop itself. And was there the access to the upstairs units would have been a separate door, right? You don't enter through the store and then go up. Stairs. Yeah, no, to like uh, apartments yeah. and stuff. Yeah, no, there's there's a, there's entrances to the apartment buildings uh, on the street where you are, actually. I wonder if there is some sort of basement and maybe we can get there another way and that's where everyone is because I remember it was really small in there I don't all these yeah, people could we take a look around and like see if there's some sort of uh, like you know those you know in New York they've got uh, those trash hatches that go yeah. down and maybe oh, there's yeah. a window um, yeah give me a uh, group luck roll okay oh boy you know Here what we go. <sighs> is Ooh. that all of us or just the lowest just the low <gasps> 26. Hell. Hell. Yeah, okay. I rolled a nine. Nine See, under 60. 49 over 36. Unfortunately, assuming Kate is still the lowest luck, uh, group luck is whoever has the worst luck rolls. Oh, I see. Um, so this is what I'll say is uh, you see uh, a, like a block and a half away, a staircase leading down. Uh, if you're, if you check it out, uh, it's, it's bolted shut. Um, now we could just wait. Also a little further away. Could just wait it out to what we think the last straggler is that goes in, and then we take that dude out. <gasps> hmm. uh, a little interrogation, maybe. Or just take him out and then peek in. Oh, you're saying take to? I, I, I must press on you that this was a uh, very imposing right, frying pan hands, right? Mm, yes, but um, seeing as we're packing. 
<laughs> Perhaps we can be um, a little more convincing than we will be otherwise. Uh huh. Surely he is outnumbered. At least. Also, keep in mind, don't forget, um, you're going off of a couple of leads here before you start murdering people. Uh, you should make sure <laughs> you've got the right uh, people. Not saying you don't or you do, just something to keep in mind uh, what your characters would actually uh, do with the current information that you have. Well, we've heard that Juju House is potentially a nucleus of right. what's going on. If he can't get in there. That the dude was super shady about the mask. Very much so. And all these weirdos are going in there at midnight into a store. There's a locked door. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can try to like, lock pick. What store um, has a security guard? And then there's the um, the abandoned like pawn shop. I don't know if we can maybe get in there. Maybe they share our basements. Uh. I don't know. But the uh, pawn shop is in view of the bodyguard, right? Well, there's the street-facing entrance, which the bodyguard can't see, and then there's a, a door that is right next to the door of Juju House um, in the court. So if you tried to get in there, the, the uh, guy He's at the right door there. would see you. However, if you went in, if you were able to find a way in from the street, you could you would assume that you could potentially come around and be able to watch what goes on in the court from the pawn shop. Well, we can try to casually pick the lock at the front entrance. Or we can split the party oh. and do both. <laughs> I just know Margot really wants to act like a drunk. I uh, know her eyes are really lit up. <laughs> Chance. The artist in her, the performative side. <laughs> um... Well, you want to check out the pawn shop first and see if what the situation is from the street. You, no one can see you there. Yeah. Couldn't hurt. Yes. Great. All right. Uh, the, the front door is all boarded up. Uh, right. You see that, the, you know, this is something you, you might be able to pull the boards off uh, or kind of jimmy your way in um, past the lock. Oh, right. So the pawn, the pawn shop is like... Completely shut down. Like I yeah, mean, it's even closer than I mean. It's like yeah, you out of can, business. You remember Margot and uh, Feyruz when you walked by during the day? You looked in, and it was completely empty in there. Um, right. The benefit of doing something like this at night is there was a lot more foot traffic than there is now, so uh, you wouldn't attract as, as much attention breaking into an old abandoned pawn shop than you Let's would do it. Day. Let's do it. Let's do it. Grab at the wood. <laughs> do you want to do uh, like locksmith to try and jimmy past the old lock, or do you want to try and just barge your way in? Like, hey, Ruth, ah. uh, hey, Ruth, come over here for a second. I just want to show you something. Right. How to pick a lock. Is this a lesson? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Here we go. Now, if I remember correctly. I'll tell you right now, I'd have better luck kicking this door down than to try to lock the, pick mm -hmm. this lock. I just remember some beginner's luck last time, and I just want you to know how really hard it is. Are you sensing tension, Vaughn? I'm sensing to some do this. tension. <laughs> I haven't been thinking about <laughs> this at all. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this lock. You're the expert. Let's yep. let's see. Let, let's have a little, lesson then. A little trapper keeper of tiny lock picks. <laughs> Pull it out. I'm gonna roll this real quick. Ah, yes, a thirteen. Under 43. 13 nice. under 43, hard success. Click, click. Ah, just listen. You pick. What are, we, what are we listening for? The lock. <laughs> clink, clink, clink. Success. <gasps> there it is. I read and it. you're able to uh, jimmy one of the boards aside, and the entry into the pawn shop is now available to you right after this word from our sponsor. You have broken in to this abandoned pawn shop that shares a, a back door uh, in this area where the entrance into Juju House is. I imagine you quickly slip inside and pass these boards and close the door. When you enter, you hear like the scuttling of critters on the, you know, scurrying because no one has clearly disturbed this area in a while. Uh, it's dark, it's dusty. Uh, you can taste the dust in your mouth 
The second you close that door, that suction of wind just like blows dust up into all your mouths. It's also bitterly cold uh, in here uh, because it's January and uh, this place hasn't had heat in a while. You see, as light starts to stream in through the window and your eyes adjust, you see uh, like rat droppings all over the place. Like f the floor is covered in rat shit. Um, and then there's just empty shelves and empty glass cabinets. If you like try to fuck with one of the light switches, nothing uh, turns on. But you don't think anyone saw you get in. You move around, feeling rat droppings crunch underneath your feet, maybe something crawling over it from time to time, and you get to the back door that you think opens up onto the back area of Ransom Court. Does the stealthiest among you want to try and crack the door to look? I mean, we're here for a reason, right? Yeah, heck yeah. Is there any, sorry, Troy, did I miss, is there any, like, the stuff, it's just junk? Is there anything that looks yeah. like um, a minigun? Uh, uh, like <laughs> a, you know, is there like a bludgeoning weapon of some kind? Uh, roll a spot hidden. Uh, I'm sure you could pull off one of the boards. Or like a table leg or a chair leg or something. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, 27 over 25. I'll spend two points. Oh, yeah. um, there is a, a glass case that's been shattered, and there's some rather large shards of glass that you think you could use as oh if God. you needed to. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been completely cleared out um, whenever this pawn shop closed down. Well, I'm not going to put a shard of glass in my hand. Carter's not the brightest bulb in the ceiling. Bread box. <laughs> yeah, in the bread box. Um... All right, but I, I, if if I'm the one with the stealthiest stealth, I'll stealth this door right the fuck open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Wait, you're going to open it? Well, I guess that's the only way we can really... Um, There's no back window, but if you, you could crack the door oh, and okay. hope that nobody sees you peeking yep. up. Okay. All right, here it goes. Everyone, let's get a little... Let me double check. 56 under 60. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. Regular success. That is regular, yes. The door is, like, stuck a little bit. Um, but you're able to pop it open after you lift up one of those big wooden bars and another bar. There's, like, two of them. You crack it open, and it makes, like, a little bit of a sound. But you look out there, and you see this big guy that Vaughn was talking about standing there. And it's a very weird view, you know, like you're just looking through this slit. You see two more people come up. The guy talks to him. Can't hear what they're saying. And he opens What if the I door. roll a listen roll? Ooh. Feel free. You know, really. Mm -hmm. 46 under 63, baby. Ooh. Regular success. Oh, God. You always undercut it with the whole regular. <laughs> <laughs> Qualifier. Okay. Based on your distance there, you can't really hear uh, anything other than like uh, maybe uh, welcome back. Sounded like somebody said welcome back. And maybe Cotter, which was weird. <laughs> right, it was in a weird accent. It's real intense. Unre un possibly Bronx. unrelated. <laughs> Did you see last night's welcome? No, that wasn't out yet. Uh, <clears throat> I'm working on this script for a pilot called Welcome Back, Cotter. No, he... Uh, <laughs> it's a series lets, of novels. <laughs> he lets those two guys in and uh, so now you know there's a, almost a dozen people in there that you've seen go in you don't know how many other people um, so you just keep watching and around like 1.30 or so uh, the guy guarding the door goes in as well So you keep watching, yeah? I mean, and anyone, unless anyone wants to try to now go in, but it seems like you'd shut the door or whatever. I mean, we maybe could at least go up and peek in the window. 
Um, Listen. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll let you know. You got to be listening more than just regularly good. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You got to hard uh... listen. <laughs> you got to listen good and listen hard, kids. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, listen. Um, I'll I'll try. I know there are you. Most of you are better than me at listening and stealth, but I don't want to put anyone in the spot. Do it. Do it. Okay. Margo tries to leave the door. So go through the door like, that I popped open yeah, and like, crawl around. As like. quietly as she can, keeping low and trying to get up to the wall so she can just kind of like get against it and kind of try to look over or however if there's a window somewhere mm -hmm. and listen at the same time. All right, so you uh, stealth out. Give me a stealth roll to start. It's so sweaty. It's my stealth. Okay, okay. 66 over 37. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I imagine you don't want to spend luck to, uh, all of your luck, basically, to turn that into a success, but you tell me. It would definitely be, like, 29 points, and I have 36, um, so not yet. Okay. Uh, so we'll say that uh, as you go out, uh, the door is really rusty on its hinges. It's like, as it opens up and it echoes throughout the court. And so all your your fellow investigators are like, what the fuck? And you're able to shut it back, uh, just leaving it a crack, and you're out there. <laughs> no one makes any movement on you. You think you see maybe some shadows in the... Uh, area at the end of the court but it might just be your imagination what do you want to do okay if everything's cool for a second no one comes out no one yells I'm going to uh, still like stay low try to get up my back up to like the wall so I can peek over slowly see what I can see and also listen mm -hmm. and Troy or we can keep we can keep an eye first. on her through the through the oh, yeah. door we got for an eye sure. on her okay. I want to get up to the wall listen first and then peek up Okay. The doors are very, very close to each other. So once you get outside after making that scene, uh, you can very easily get to the uh, the window of Juju House and the door. So you get up there. Give me a listen roll. Okay, no problem. That's okay. 24 over 23. I'm spending a luck. There you mm -hmm. go. Um, but wait. Maybe should I make it hard? I'd have to go down to 12. Um, I'm gonna do that. I'm going to make my 24 a 12 okay. for it to be a hard success. So. It's a bold move. But fortune favors the bold in Call of Cthulhu 7th edition. Not so I much chaos. I don't know, maybe it does. And maybe like my thing is that I'm trying to listen, but I'm a little freaked out over the noise at first. And then I just kind of take a breath, calm down and just maybe find a crack, put my ear up to it. Put your ear up to the crack of the door and you're really trying to hone in. You hear a sound behind you again. Something back there, maybe it's just a rat that ran out of the pawn shop. And you listen and it's like, can't hear anything until suddenly you do and it sounds like something from one of your nightmares this like hum almost this consistent humming sound that starts to like echo in your ears it's like So with a hard success, you really try to listen in. And it sounds like several voices. Like wailing or singing. All these sounds are overlapping over one another. And it sounds so distant that you can't quite make it out. But it does sound like several voices all at once. Okay. I think she gets a little freaked out from hearing the humming. 
shakes herself out of that and tries to peek over to the window and see if she sees anything. Drop all my dice. You look at the window. So nervous. And that sheet is still up and the little sign for when the hours are. They open at 9 a.m. Now it's quarter to two, two in the morning. That's there, it. I just see the sheet. That's it. Yeah. You see the little place where... Mail slot. Where, <laughs> you see the little place where Silas was peeking out at you, but that has been closed again. Crap. Okay. I feel like I've exhausted everything I can do, so I sneak back to the crack in the door and just say what I thought I heard, as confusing as it sounds, but I can't see anything. What What do we want to do? Should, should I do something else? I'm already out here. Uh, I get, no, I mean, just, does the door open? Oh, I you did not. Handle. <laughs> I did not try that. Just, you can okay. retcon that if you want to try the door. It was locked. Yeah. I'm shocked. <laughs> I, I don't know how to pick the lock. Okay. Um, uh, what do you guys, what do you guys want to do? We can, we can always break the door down. Like we're for, I mean, I can tr- try to pick the lock it, and see if we can. Sounds like there are several. I mean, we saw how many people went down there. Um, a lot of people. It's a great and number of them. They're making a lot of weird noise. Uh, uh, not to, not to be accused of cowardice, but um, a better time to break in and search the place maybe during the day, during one of this gentleman's protracted lunch breaks, when there's less of a crowd <laughs> down there. <laughs> huh? Aren't you curious to know what they're doing down there? Devilishly yes. so. But, I, but I, I, I don't want to. I mean, don't we want break to be hacked in to bits. Break in, in the Zenvat. In Zenvat. We knocked the door down in Zenvat. Ah, I hadn't thought that far yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I know you American chaps just want to kick down the door and go in guns blazing like the, like the bloody cavalry, but um, uh, they, they may be incredibly dangerous, they may be armed. On the other hand, it may be something completely harmless that we've misjudged, in which case it'll be us back in the oh, bloody on, cell. It's, it's midnight and they have a doorman it's with a yes, thick it's neck it's and frying pans for hands. Oh, I agree. I, I think something terribly unsavory is going on. <laughs> well, okay, all right. Let's just backtrack here for a quick second. <laughs> what are we hoping to learn? Because at this point, I feel like we got a pretty good sense that these guys are up to some shit that, uh, Seem fairly uh, this dangerous. This house. It is. This is a hub. It's a hub of, right, of right, very right. nefarious activities. But I feel like we know that right now. People. Yes, but what are they doing? And why what? does that man want that mask so badly? How about this? If you can open the lock, I'll follow you in. Uh, well, that implies that I'm going in first, and I don't know how that. Oh no! Not no, no, going first, Verus. Not you. Let's, okay, let's just, I'll just try to pick the lock real quick. We'll see if we can crack it open, maybe hear a little bit more without just going in and trying to kill like 15 people. Fine. I, I realize I will sound like a absolute ass for bringing this up, but <laughs> perhaps, perhaps we involve Lieutenant Poole in this oh, affair. Oh, ew, ew. <laughs> what if he's was, what if he's I, involved in this? What if it goes all the way to the top? How do we know we can trust him? I think that the, everything we've heard implies that Robeson is the one who, in whom the, the claws of corruption are, are sunk deep. Yes. I, I, I got the impression that, that, that Pool, while being something of a hard case, is at least on the up and up. He's such a dick. He's like Zipulka. I understand, but if we must provide legal proof if Adams is to be freed. Sure, but we gotta hear more. What are we supposed to do? Tell him that there are a bunch of people went into this, this store and started humming in the middle of the night? He's not gonna <gasps> care. Better that he sees it with his own eyes rather than hears it from us. Do you have your camera with you? Yes, I always have my camera with me. Do we, do we take pictures of what's going on in there and then we show it to him? Okay. And if that fails, if we get found out, then we go guns blazing. Don't you need one of those big flashy lights, though? Not if it's not dark in there. And also, yeah. I mean, you just adjust the ISO and you turn down the... You open up the aperture. Don't worry about it. It's not one of those cameras where you have to, like, hold a shuffle over your head and wait for 15 minutes no, while it exposes it. No, it's one of these newfangled uh, Kodak. It's just hold it. Oh, great. Okay, fantastic. Small, yeah. 
And I got my GoPro, so Maybe they so have we'll really good lighting down there. We don't know. There's a chance. Either way, uh, Fraulein uh, uh, Sau is an artist and doesn't need to do a bloody 19th century daguerreotype once she's yes, down there. Out. <laughs> oh, alone. Talking to a door. Come out, someone. Come yes. out. One time I went to an amusement park and everyone dressed up like cowboys. And I just remember it took a long time to get that thing back. Oh, I love going to the fair and dressing up like I'm so nostalgic. <laughs> For 40, 40 years ago. 40 years ago. <laughs> you guys, this is not the time. It's vintage. Okay. All right, I'm going to go pick this fucking lock. Right. All right. And uh, Vaughn will draw his pistol, which he has brought. And Fairies will draw her her pistol. Yeah. And, My uh, hand on mine. Carter's got a lightsaber. I just preferred to use this when there, were, there was less, than a, less of a crowd. But if you swear blind that you can be quiet, then... I can swear even doubly blind that I can run real fast. So if this goes south, we're out of here. Of your powers of retreat, Tillinghast, I am assured. Okay, here we go. Going out there. Do I have to stealth again, too? Uh, you don't have to. Get to the door? You don't have to. I'll stealth to the door. (laughs) 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 Um, hmm. Now... What is, oh, 10. I got a 10. Okay. 10. Okay, great. Um, that's a extreme success. Extreme you know, success. Troy, you like pointing out my regularities. Carter moves cat-like. You disappear. The door. I warmed that door shadow. open for you. I got all the squeaks out. So you did. You worked it. You worked yeah, it loosened down. Loosen the jar. Now, where the proof is in the pudding, the locksmith. That's a 36 under 43. 36 under 43. That's a regular success. Regular success. You go to Jimmy the Lock to get into Juju House. And two things happen. You unlock the door. Yeah. But just as you do, you hear police sirens coming from the distance, getting closer. And then you see, I don't know if they had the the red and blue lights back then or not, but let's just say- Stop and Google it. They had something that you can tell that they are parked very close and you hear police doors closing. However, you have a moment to look inside and the thing you notice is there is no one in the room. What do you do? Uh, uh, I try to like, <laughs> like somersault back to the other door. Just yeah, <laughs> I follow him in there. Try to get back to the other door before the police come. And you, yep. do you keep the door open or do you shut it? Um, I should. Uh, I should shut. Maybe the police call. Maybe it's unrelated. A little crack. Okay, a little crack. I I heard them. I want to see which police it is. All right, little crack. Little crack. You see, like, flashlight beams coming around. They're looking. They're scanning around. Looking. The lights flash in front of the open door to the pawn shop there. Maybe the guy starts walking over closer to the pawn shop. Do you guys do anything? No. Do we, do we back away from the door? Real low and, Wait, and we left just the pawn shop door open? Hide behind, a crack to, so not we the, could yeah, see. Not the crack of the pawn shop with the juju house you left close. Oh, right. Gotcha. Okay. Try to hide behind a table. <laughs> you shut the door or you keep it open? How close are they? Are they far enough to where we can potentially shut that door and they won't notice? 15 feet away. uh, The stealthiest among you would feel pretty confident to shut that door. They're walking towards you. You feel that light. That light beam is getting bigger and bigger. It's now going through the crack of the door and uh, spreading light on the back room of the pawn shop. Someone report a break-in at this pawn shop. Can we go back out the other door that we broke into? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, so we start heading towards the opposite end of the building, so the the other door. You shut that door, or do you leave it open? 
The door that is we there broke into? Already the shining a light in it. Back the back door. door. Leave is it open. Already shining a light. Yeah, they're okay. already shining a light in it. All right, so they get there, and you see that light is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you guys come around to the front. What's the plan here? You can get right out that front door, but you don't know. GTFO? If there's a, if they're going to be running right into more cops. There's no like shop window out front where we can like see if there's cops. Give me a spot hidden. Okay. It's a dusty old window. You're looking out there. Dusty old window, is it? You know what? And can I do a spot hidden for hiding places? I don't see anything. I don't. I want to see spot hidden for hiding places. I'm not. I hate all my dice. (laughs) I I rolled a thirty under eighty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hard success. You do a spot hit and it's one police car uh, and you don't see anybody in it. And you did see two beams of flashlight. So you think if you're going to go, you got to go now. Let's go. Let's go. 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 Do, 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 do. You make it out that door, slam it. We cut back to that cop down in Ransom Court. Notices the door to the pawn shop's open. Just like opens it up and goes inside. We cut to you knuckleheads running around Harlem. <laughs> Judge, judgey. <laughs> <Right in sweat. laughs> That's my new thing. I call everybody a knucklehead. I love it. I come home, I see You're my boys. Like, what are you knuckleheads doing? Yeah. <laughs> noogie. Lots of yeah, noogies jokers. at the stage. <laughs> jokers is fun, too. Uh, <laughs> you're now... In Harlem, I imagine just, even though it's cold out, you're just got like flop sweat from that encounter. Mm-hmm. What the hell is going on at Juju House? Something bad. I'm, I'm now more assured than ever that this is where the, this is where those murderers are holding their, their obscene rituals. I bet if when we talk to, um, uh, Hill? Pool? Maybe pool? Oh, Hilton? No, the, yeah, the guy on death row. Um, Adams. Hilton Adams. Adams. Hilton. Um, Hil- oh, that's where. What's in Adams? Um, I feel like maybe we can get some more information about, you know, if there's like a secret code word and we can send someone else next time or just how to get in there. Um, yeah. yeah. Yes. And then I guess Vaughn is right. We should tell fucking Pool what's going on. I mean, <sighs> who knows? Those, that knucklehead cop might have found something. <laughs> That knucklehead cop, the Robeson, who we keep hearing about. I, I, I believe he's one of them. Yeah, that would suck. Who, <laughs> who saw us break in to the, hmm. Yes, who, who made the call? Maybe they have lookouts. Who indeed? You know, no one else knew we were going. We're not, I'm not blibber blabbering to anyone. You said there were and, apartments, and they, tenement apartments up above, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe someone in the upper story saw someone break into the um, abandoned pawn shop. Yes, but who would call in for an abandoned, boarded up yeah. pawn shop? Well. It's conspiracy of it. I don't Speak like easy it. first, I think, is in order. <laughs> Get rid of these shakes. Grab and a then, couple uh, of cocktails at the local speakeasy. Hmm. And then night falls on New York City. Boom. Wednesday, January 21st. Huh. Guys, wake up. 9 a.m. Good Lord, I'm late for my train. <laughs> <laughs> Margo wakes up real sweaty and still sexually confused. <laughs> the old Fifth Avenue rooster is crowing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's the plan here? You do have an early wake up. You had a long night, I imagine, especially if you hit up speakeasy. Maybe you didn't do that. Uh, I don't know the phone. Yeah, <laughs> that was uh, uh, Carter. Definitely did. You think I'm going to go through almost getting pinched by the coppers? Mm-hmm. So yeah, all right. So Carter's celebrate. in real rough shape because I would imagine you have to get up around seven, seven thirty, eight o'clock Ugh, at the brutal. latest uh, if you want to get over to Grand Central Station. Uh, it's not too far from the Waldorf, but still, you don't want to miss this. Uh, they made it pretty clear to you that it's a half hour window, and you don't know if that starts the moment you come or if you got to hit your appointment time. Oh yeah, Vaughn gets on the train just being like held up by coffee. It's just like <laughs> so when Carter when Carter came out of his room at the when they're all hanging out, he had put the his mask on the wrong side of his face. <laughs> so he just oh, God. Walked out. <laughs> it's a fucking hole. 
Oh, gosh. <laughs> I've brought donuts. I can't I see anything. And hmm. some egg sandwiches on these bagels. Oh, those travel well. Let's take those. Well, you eat the bagels now, and then we're bringing the donuts to the prison so that we can, you know, um, have them then. <laughs> have them. Have them then. Uh, are all four of you uh, going? Yes. It's up to you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you don't have a meeting with, uh, assuming that uh, Ramsey can get this meeting with Bradley Gray. That meeting's until tomorrow. Right. Um, you'll probably find out if you've got to head out of the Waldorf early. You imagine that he's going to set that meeting up this morning, and hopefully you'll have a, a message from uh, Ramsey upon returning. I so, mean, alternatively, guys, I could go, and if anyone wants to join me, that's great. I could go to pool while you guys are going to Sing Sing. Yeah, you guys really hit it off last time. That would be a good idea. Yeah, that's why yeah. I was suggesting it. It just felt like it's fertile ground. You're the man. <laughs> Maybe, uh... I gotta feather touch. But perhaps be... we'll wait. Perhaps we'll wait till the evidence we've collected is uh, more substantial. Feeling, yes? You're right. I'm... I better start going to the prison. Let's go. So I'm hungover. Over. The gills, old boy. Oh, and I'm hungover. <laughs> a hungover Carter with powdered sugar all over his face from Margot's Donuts. Uh... Vaughn, Margot, and Ferus hop on the train to Sing Sing. If you guys are at all interested in this, I always find this uh, interesting, uh, especially playing with a game that has some history to it. Uh, Sing Sing was built over the course of three years, back in 1825 to 1828, and it was built by other prisoners from New York's second prison called Auburn at gunpoint. So they built the entire prison with guns pointed on them. Uh, Sing Sing became the city's third penitentiary at the time, and it's where the phrase going up the river originated because it's along the Hudson River. So whenever you hear like, oh, we're sending up the river, it's because of uh, Sing Sing prison. Um, it was originally next to the village. It was known as Sint Sink or Sink Sink um, on the east bank of the Hudson River, 30 miles north of New York City. Um, the prison's reputation was so bad about the way the prisoners were treated there um, that in 1902, the city itself changed its name from Sid Sink to Ossining uh, so that it would be uh, sound different from the prison that was named Sing Sing. Um, in the early 20th century is when conditions started to be a little bit better when the warden at that time uh, instituted these sweeping changes to try and like uh, replace the original overcrowded and crumbling brick cell uh, houses. He brought in educational programs to reform and retrain the inmates rather than just the brutal punishment that they were facing uh, before these changes were instituted. Um, but despite his changes, he still uh, presided over the execution of 303 prisoners during his 21 tenure uh, at Sing Sing. The first prisoner was uh, electrocuted in 1891 in the specially built, quote, death house where death row inmates were kept in a stone prison within a prison. The electric chair uh, was nicknamed Old Sparky uh, and it electrocuted three other men that day uh, that it electrocuted its first. By 1916, Every execution in New York State, which is huge, uh, you know, Buffalo's six hours away, uh, it all took place at Sing Sing, um, so much so that they had to build a second death house in 1920. Um, and that is the one that you are visiting today because in 1922 is when it came into operation. So you take the train, you get off at Austin Station. I drive by it anytime I'm going to the city. And uh, you get to that same door where those cops are, and the cops see you, Marco, and Vaughn again. Oh, hey, look who it is! Look at these two. What are you? Uh, you, what, are you selling Girl Scout cookies? I already got mine from my neighbor. Uh, who are your friends here? They they work for the uh, New York Times too. <laughs> they're gonna be fucking. They're back. The English guy and the German girl. They brought some friends. Where are you from, honey? You from Sweden? What about you, half face? <laughs> <laughs> so charming. Yeah. What so we, we got you? a letter of introduction now from. What? what 
Describe to me again what our pass key is. Pass you've got an appointment. Uh, so dogs. his yeah, wife. You've got an appointment from the wife. Um, mm -hmm. But like maybe they haven't put two and two together uh, right. yet. So they just see yeah. you and they're just mocking. Yeah, Carter turns to, to Vaughn and, and Margo. It's like, you guys can go ahead and do the honors here. It seems like yes. you've earned it. I go up yeah. with my donut in hand and I say, we have an appointment, sirs. Oh, yes, I'm sure now? If you, I'm yes. sure if you check your books, dear man. You'll find our, our name in your ledger at uh, 10 o'clock. Oh, let me check your books. Uh, uh, you got Thin Mints? Those around in 1925? I'll take uh, some Thin Mints. I just Googled it, and the Girl Scouts were started in 1912. So I imagine you were selling cookies by at least 1914. <laughs> so let me check your books. Yes. Samoas. Dosey Dos. I don't know what the fuck he's saying. I myself was one of Baden Powell's best and brightest. <laughs> yes, I, I'm familiar of the, of the, of the scouting organization. Yes. Uh, I'll, ch I'll check my books. What's your name? My name's Villiers. Representing uh, uh, the, the affairs of Mr. Adams, who we're here to see. I have in my, my accompaniment uh, Ms. Sauer, Ms. Gibran, and that over there is Tillinghast. Villiers, Tillinghast. Your broad and sour. Yeah. Oh, is you're going to make fun of our names yeah, now? I'll check, no, I'll check my books. Hold on, let me check my books. What is your name? Faerus has Adam? like full mouth of donuts just scowling. <laughs> Adam. Your name's, my name's Adam Fitzpatrick. Miller. Officer Fitzpatrick. Oh, Respect Fitzpatrick. the badge. Let me check my books here. Fun. Uh, Tilling ass cutter. I can We're make fun of the names too. <laughs> what, we have uh, an appointment. What time did you say your appointment was? 11.30? Uh, hold on one second. <laughs> yeah, just get to work. You know, you actually do have an appointment here, so, uh... Oh, we do. <laughs> oh look at that. So, oh. yeah, we'll, uh... We'll let you in. I um, guess you will. Excellent. You've been ever so helpful. I'll have do you? my best to put in a good word with your, um, superiors. I'm not. A zero stars... Um, off. Let him know you're doing such a wonderful job at this very, I'm sure, such a fulfilling job that you have sitting here, taking names down and, and, and bringing people in and out back yes, and forth. No, no Secretary. other thing going on in your life. Secretary don't talk Fitzgerald, to me with your face covered those, in powdered sugar. Don't those jobs usually go to us women? <laughs> we don't have women cops here. Anyway, you have an appointment. Don't push your luck, because I can take this pen. Ah, uh, it's a pencil. Shit. I was gonna say, I could just cross it out. I could find a pen and cross it out. Yeah, no need for that. I'll crack up job, Fitzpatrick. We'll, you um, ha you we'll have been be so way. helpful. And, I, and as she goes and takes his tie and wipes off the powdered sugar <laughs> on her mouth, and throws it back down. Not gonna lie, that was pretty odd. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right, Lord. come on in. Uh, we're going to check you all for weapons. Uh, no weapons allowed in the prison. So uh, if you have weapons, please put them in the box here. You'll get them on your way out. Uh, but we still have to pad you all down. Uh, is anyone going to try and sneak weapons into the death house? That seems like a mm -hmm. bad No. <laughs> when he says okay, that, sir. she's like, no need for the pat down. And she takes out her gun and like just slams it on the table, gives him a wink, and then heads him. Mm -hmm. So all our pistols come out. And <laughs> yeah, he's just like an armory's worth of guns. <laughs> oh, and here's this knife. Car yeah, knife. Oh. Carter has the shattered glass from the pawn shop. <laughs> I thought it would come in hand. <laughs> As I said, uh, we're from abroad. One can only be too careful. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that could be classified as a weapon is conf confiscated, um, and then you're escorted uh, into the into the building itself. There's actually a hill. Uh, you you get out on the grounds outside, so you go past this gatehouse and you're outside. And there's a hill that like goes right over uh, railroad tracks um, that lead to the second part of the prison where the death house uh, is. Um, and you get to this building, and it's a two-story, uh, two-story building, but it's pretty long, all in brick. And there is a uh, another guy standing outside. He is uh, another officer. He's short, stocky. Uh, he's got salt and pepper hair that's got like a military cut, and he uh, 
he waves off the officer up. I'll take it from here. Uh, hi, I'm uh, I'm Sub Warden uh, Brunton. Uh, can I can I have your names here? We're gonna be spending uh, some time together. I just wanna I don't wanna be rude. Uh, what is your name, Miss? Looks at you, Fay Ruth. Uh, Ms. Gibran will be will, will suffice. Don't we should have have plain name tags? Yes. Yeah, we don't, we've been talking about doing name tags, but it's just we have a lot of uh, prisoners to kill, and so <laughs> it just it really ties up our day. Uh, Ms. Gibran, and you, young lady. Uh, Margot Sauer. Margot Sauer, Miss Sauer, and uh, and you, sir, points to Vaughn. Yeah, Vaughn Villiers. Mr. Villiers, and and you, uh, sir. Uh, Carter Tilly. Yes. Mr. Tilling, yes. Uh, once again, uh, I'm Brunton, George Brunton. I'm the sub warden here. Um, I understand Mrs. Adams arranged this visit for you. She's a, she's a real nice lady. I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting her uh, a bunch of times, and I uh, truthfully, I feel really bad for her. She seems sweet. And and the reporter, too. You uh, you know Miss Schosenberg? Yes. That's right. Yeah, both, both very nice young women. And... Uh, Anyways, Mr. Adams, I'm sure he'll be uh, happy to have some company. So right this way. And he walks you down a, a, or in the direction of a, a hallway past the door. What are we going to say? As we're walking, I'm like, um, a subordinate Brunton, I, I understand that in your capacity, it is, it is not for you to judge. That, um, that is left up to other members of your August justice system. But in your personal opinion, does Mr. Adams have the character that would imply the disposition capable of doing the crimes for which he is accused, uh, Mr. Villiers, is it? Um, yes. Yeah, I've been I've been sub warden here for uh, a few years now, and before that, I was uh, I, I worked the uh, the front where you came in uh, for another fifteen years. I've been here a while, and uh, you'd be surprised what some of these some of these people are capable of doing. Uh, some of the nicest uh, men I've met here. Uh, did unspeakable things, unspeakable mm. things, and you'd never know uh, to talk to them. Now, maybe coming in here when they know that the end is nigh, they uh, have a different outlook on life. I'm not sure. Uh, I will say that uh, Mr. Adams is uh, is very kind, and uh, it's really not for me to say uh, whether he's innocent or guilty. Uh, if I was a judge. I don't know. I, I I don't see how a guy like this could do it. But also, if they tell me I'm the one that has to pull the switch in a week, I'll do it because that's my job. I understand. You understand? Um, let me explain to you. And he's walking you down uh, right this way. Let me just explain to you how things are going to work here. You're going to have 30 minutes to speak to Mr. Adams on the dot. I have a stopwatch. Uh, you can speak to him through the bars of his cell. Uh, you cannot exchange any items with the prisoner, and you cannot make any physical contact with the prisoner. Uh, any attempts to do either of those things will result in the interview's termination uh, and your removal from the premises. Do, do you all understand that? Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Great, you seem like nice people, you know, but I gotta, I gotta enforce the rules. So, anyways, uh, he's right up here. He just walks you down this like dark, dark hallway. Uh, there's just like little buzzing lights every once in a while. Bzz, bzz, bzz. I think Carter, um, especially, like being in a prison, is not. Uh, it's like his nightmare, obviously, for all the shit that he has gotten into in his life. So he's really between the hangover and being here. It's he's not doing great. Yeah, I mean, how many times in his life was he one bad decision away from ending up in a place like this? Right. It's cold in here. Obviously, it's it's mid-January. It's been a, a horrible winter, and uh, they don't divert their best heat to the death house. So, he takes you down and uh, points you in the direction of a, uh, a small cell. There's like a, a, a single bed and uh, like a little sink area and a bucket. Um, and you see sitting on the edge of the bed a uh, an African-American man with very strong features and a muscular build, uh, although it looks like he's probably lost some weight uh, since he's been in prison. The clothes are kind of hanging off of him oddly, and the clothes are... Uh, classic like black and white striped uh, denim prisoner's uniform. He has short dark hair that's lightly peppered with gray even though you know this guy is like in his 
late twenties, early thirties, and you can see in the the light that's shining past the bars, his face is is creased with lines. Um, I think I actually have a uh, picture of this I can show you right now. If you look on roll twenty, mm. that's Elton Adams, mm. and uh, he says in a low voice that will sound like all of my NPCs. Now, let me see if I can do a new voice. He's like, uh, I would shake your hand, uh, but I don't think that would go down too well. Hey, Mr. Brunton. And uh, George just gives like a, a not unfriendly mm, grunt. And then he takes a few steps back to give you a little privacy, but he's still like eight or nine feet away from you and just has his hands uh, folded in front of him. You approach the cell, and uh, he isn't even really making eye, ta- eye contact with you. He just says, uh, I'm uh, sorry to hear there's been another murder. We're sorry to hear you're still in here. Are you now? What do you know about me? Well, we spoke to your wife. And... We are of the high opinion that you do not belong in this place. Well, I uh, share that opinion with you, as does my wife, as do, I hope, many people. Although most of my friends have abandoned me. Maybe not. Speaking of your friends, Mr. Adams, Hmm. I had the fortune recently meeting your comrade, Mr. Arthur Mills. Mm. How is I? Is he old enough? Holding up is how I put it. He seems rather, um, rather tight. But he informed me as to the nature of your... your work around Harlem. Trying to... discover for yourselves the mystery of... the murders plaguing your community. Takes a deep breath and... Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people, the people who put me here, maybe they thought that uh, those murders were going to end by putting me in here. But now there's been another one, and I'll tell you right now, there'll be more unless the perpetrators are stopped. We completely agree. We, We too had a friend that was killed at the hands of whoever is behind this, we believe. Somebody was wearing red flannel. He looks up, makes eye contact with you. Hmm. Well, if Millie vouched for you, I suppose I can tell you what I know. (laughs) I don't even know where to begin, but From what I understand, people started disappearing long before they were turning up dead, just vanishing out of thin air. Truth be told, I think these disappearances were going on for years, although how long I couldn't say. I only started noticing them when I came back from the war in 1919. But they could have been going on a lot longer than that. Once... I'd spotted that something was going on. There were some other people in the area where I hung out with, people like Art, Jackie, Needham, Douglas. We all started noticing that uh, it seemed like people in our community were being targeted. And we, we started to look for a pattern. And at first it wasn't clear until we realized that all these disappearances were taking place on a monthly basis. And they all took place, all the people that were reported missing, all took place during the dark of the moon. When you think about it, it makes sense. Perfect time to grab somebody when you can't be seen. But I always felt there was something else to it. Now that's just the disappearances. The murders, they didn't seem to have any fixed schedule but they did seem to happen in response 
to something specific. I'm sure that the last one, well, the eighth one, I suppose, now that there's been nine, I think that one happened just to frame me. Why you in particular? That I don't know for sure. I think it's because I was poking my nose into somebody else's business. Here so I thought I was helping. We all thought we were helping. The Juju House. Juju House. Did Millie tell you about that? Um, we've heard that name come up a lot from various people we've been talking to, and we've actually been there to see what's going on, and we'd love to know what you discovered before this last eighth murder happened. It seems to be maybe what the trigger was. And if there's something that you held back from your comrades, from the police, even from Ms. Uh, Schosenberg, because you thought it might strain credulity. Just know that we are particularly open-minded to matters of uh, esoteric quality. And from what we saw last night, it looked like there was a gathering. If that means that one more person is going to get murdered, if we can stop that, you have to tell us. A gathering? Yes, they were either wailing or singing. Um, there was a low hum that just, like, reverberated through my body. I didn't know if I was hearing it or feeling it. I knew. I knew there was something going on there. Maybe it was discovering that that put me here. Well, as we continued looking into these disappearances, we discovered another pattern. None of these abductions or murders took place within a two-block radius of West 137th Street between Lennox and the Harlem River. Apart from the one that saw me arrested. Now beyond that, all the abductions fanned out in a, in a rough circle for about a mile west of the Harlem River. Now the locations of the bodies that turned up, those were spread out all over the place. And I heard that uh, your friend was found down in Chelsea. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, so either they're changing their patterns and getting desperate, or your friend got too close to something like I did. You know, early on when I was put in here, I was a little more skeptical of who I could trust, but by all accounts, I don't have much more time left in here, so I'm putting it all on the line. How many days do I have left, Mr. Brunton? And uh, George Brunton just... Uh, Acts like he doesn't hear. Puts his head down. There was this doctor. Lemming. Mordecai Lemming. They interviewed him when all these murders and abductions were taking place. And he said it had to do with an African death cult. I figured he was just a, a racist, but we were following up on every lead. So my friends and I started doing some research, went down to the New York Public Library, and we kept finding mention of this cult that goes all the way back to, to Kenya called the Cult of the Bloody Tongue. Now, the only place in all of New York City that has any ties to Africa is Juju House. It's run by this Old man's got to be in his 70s, maybe older. Silas Nkwane. We met. Well, he receives regular shipments from Africa every month. They come into a place called uh, Emerson Imports down on the docks. I don't know what he's getting, but that seemed to be the only link to Africa. So maybe this lemming just wanted some attention. Maybe you want to throw some more negative energy towards the community up here in Harlem. But if there was a connection, we wanted to know. I didn't manage much surveillance of Juju House before the police came for me. Except for one night. 
One night I uh, knew somebody that lived in one of the buildings above and they let me come in and watch down on the court. Then I saw a man come out, late 30s, maybe early 40s, muscular, shaved head, African man. He came out, so I watched him come out and then I ran downstairs and I followed him. I followed him for a while and uh, he went into a, a little coffee shop on 139th Street and 6th Avenue called Fat Mabel's. It's a speakeasy at night, coffee shop during the day. So I started asking around a little bit, coming back the next day, seeing if anybody knew about this guy and everybody was very mum didn't want to talk to me about them. In fact, some of them even warned me to walk away, stop asking questions. But I got a name. Magunga Madari was this gentleman's name. I am certain that following this man was the moment that whoever was behind these murders and abductions decided I was becoming a threat. Did you... At the moment you made that breakthrough with um, Mr. Madari, did you have a sense that you were being watched? Followed? That, that whether his associates were, were aware of your investigation? Cops were coming around every once in a while. Police. Robeson's men, yeah. They were uh, giving me a hard time telling them to leave the uh, police work to the police. And I always acquiesced. Didn't want to get in trouble. But we kept pushing. Then I followed this guy and the locals don't even want to tell me about him. Now my friends, or my old friends, they were more uh, paranoid than I was. I wanted to know the truth. But then again, I'm in here, and they're out there. The, the, they said that they recovered your knife from the scene, but maybe it's not really... Where would it be? Is there a way for us to find it? It wasn't my knife that was used to murder the eighth victim. I had more sense than to take my bolo with me on patrol. I knew that all the previous victims were killed by knives. I wasn't gonna take a large knife out there. So I, uh, I carried my army issue revolver with me for protection anytime I went on patrol. When the police came to my house, they searched and found my knife. And later it was covered in the victim's blood to secure my conviction of that, I am sure. You'll never find that bolo. That's what put me in here. That's why the appeal didn't work. I was set up, and I think I was set up by the cops. So either the cops are the ones doing the killing, or the cops are the ones turning a blind eye. Is it your opinion, Mr. Adams, that it was Robeson's men who planted this physical evidence on your neck? I think Robeson's dirty. I think Robeson might be the head of this whole thing. Wouldn't surprise me. But then there's this other fella, Makunga Madari. He's not the old man that runs that shop, but he walked out of there like he owned the place. And as for the Emerson imports, was this a place that you and your compatriots surveilled as well, or just a place you heard? We went down there. They didn't really take kindly to us being around, so we just watched. It's just a importer exporter boats come in but they seem to be the only ones that are supplying stuff from africa to juju house hmm. we looked around there's just no one else with any real ties to africa like this in the city hmm. brunton speaks up uh two more minutes um 
your notebook, it, it was confiscated, maybe gone. Just, is there anything in there that you remember that might be helpful? Um, in finding out who did this, exonerating you. No, I mean, if you found the notebook, that would exonerate me. Other than that, you just have to find the real killers. I think it's my only chance. And but in the notebook, would it exonerate you, though? It's just your accounts. How would it be proof? It was, it was, it was dated. It was dated. It had all of my reports of everything that I did. I think that that alone, along with the fabric that I tore off of that person, you mentioned the uh, headband that they were wearing. I yes. stopped someone that had that same thing. They took that too. You just saw someone out uh, during the day with uh, this on? Where? No, it was at night. Oh. At night. I stopped someone from being abducted or killed or otherwise. Oh. And as I was beating them off, the only... Not beating them off, that would have been... Well, <laughs> as I was beating them off the person being abducted, <laughs> as he was running away, I noticed Listen, he had, we beat off three of them in a hotel. <laughs> so, <laughs> what you do on your own time is your business. But I'll tell you, this man has a great lengths though. to beat one of them off. He, he had a weird... Plunged out a bloody window. Fucking headband on. Got it, got it. Oh, wait, I got one. Hey. Yeah. Is there... Is there any, uh... Any... What do you think these people... The people that got abducted... Nothing, no shared qualities, nothing that they were doing, like... Were they always in a specific place that was similar or like were they, what anything yeah, tied together the abit the the victims talking for any specific reason every walk of life every walk of life the only thing that they seemed to have in common was that it all happened in a certain area around harlem except for this area right around juju house so they just be walking down the street and boom gone dark of the moon monthly the dark of the moon tended to be where these people were being taken now mind you there were eight murders at the time I was arrested, but there were dozens of disappearances where the bodies never showed up. And as far as I know, those people were never seen again. And that all happened in my area. Now why some were killed and some never returned, why some bodies were dumped, I couldn't figure it out. If I could get out there on the street today, I could figure this out. But I'm trapped in here. All right, folks, we got to uh, we got to wrap this up. Um, thank you, uh, thank you, Hilton. Uh, thank you all for coming. And, uh, and he like grabs on the bar. He's like, "Please, just get me out of here. Get me out of here." If you can go somewhere tonight to check, where would you go? <laughs> Juju House. Something's going on at Juju House. Very well. Your you wife sends her love. Uh, Brunt leaves she's faithful you and resolute. As shall we be. That's enough. That's enough, folks. Come on now. I don't want to have to enforce the rules. That's enough. That's enough. And he walks you back down that long hallway. Outside, you have to climb the hill to get back, and you look up into the sky, and it's sunny out today. And you wonder, when is the next day? when it will be the dark of the moon. Hmm. Maybe we'll find out next week. I don't know. But that's this week's episode. Ooh, that's going to be in like 20 days. The dark. 20 days from now. It's got to be 20 days. Yeah, definitely. We're definitely not recording again in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely not going to go upstairs and change our shirts and come right back. Nope, not at all. Not at all. Good night, everybody! <laughs>